Wow. Thank you all so much for coming. This is so awesome to be here. You know, it's been a long time, and uh, it's kind of like coming home in a lot of ways. But I wanted to uh, say something about waves. You know, waves, they're hard to ride. In the process of learning this demanding and often uncompromising activity, we can discover something extremely profound. And if there is more difficulty in seeing this forest through these trees, in time we do see in this experience of surfing that there are many very interesting parables about life. So while the waves of life may seem indeed more difficult to ride than the waves on the ocean, when we apply those lessons learned out in the surf, we sometimes can find, in a metaphorical sense, that easier paddle out, you know, like hooking into that rip current that slides us smoothly through the closed out sets of day-to-day -day life, and maybe even gain that outside lineup keeping our hair dry. So, you know, I've been studying and practicing yoga for a long time, and I found that the state of samadhi, or enlightened consciousness, can be attained through a regular and dedicated practice of deeply focused meditation. I've been a surfer for a long time, too, and I truly believe that the focus necessary to surf successfully is also a state of deep meditation. So it just may be that we're onto something a lot deeper than we thought the first time we decided that surfing was going to be our life. So the waves of life are difficult and dangerous to ride, but they are our waves. These are waves we must ride, and we have to ride them on our own. No one can ride them for us. And in these waves, we encounter outside sets of doubt, shallow reefs of guilt, close out sections of fear, with endless currents, rips, tide changes, we easily and often lose our way. You know, on our board, too, I mean, <laughs> that gets dinged, takes on water, delaminates, and frequently buckles when we least expect it, and usually when we need it the most. And if none of this lends itself to the development of a peaceful and happy state of mind, we need one to stay on the wave. Where do we find the balance and the direction, keep our feet on the board, stay ahead of the white water? You know, I'm speaking here in a figurative sense. I think you figured that out. But surfing and yoga teach us about living a life in harmony with nature. The most natural thing we do, the simple act of breathing, really becomes the foundation of our surfing and yoga practices. For many of us, <laughs> every time we paddle out or come to our mats, this may be the only time we breathe the right way. You know, we were born knowing how to breathe properly, but along the way, life came along, we forgot. You know, that rapid, irregular, shallow mouth breathing takes the place of rhythmic, slow, deep breathing through our nose. And when we breathe correctly and concentrate on our breathing, we become aware of an increasing sense of mindfulness. And from this mindfulness, we begin to understand the value of being in the present. Mindful awareness and being present are all about paying attention. Our world has endless distractions. Losing focus is easy. 
Concentration and staying focused is hard. A large part of attention is being able to be in the moment, right here, right now. How easily we drift back to the past where nostalgia makes us sad, or we worry about the future and are too anxious to stay in the present. This moment is all there is. The past and the future only exist in this moment. I mean, think about that. If you weren't thinking about what's already happened or what hasn't even happened yet, where would they be? Only by thinking about them now makes them happen. So when we live in recollection and anticipation, we have a much less clear picture of the present. Staying present is really an excellent intention to set for ourselves before we paddle out, before we start a yoga session, before each day. Surfing and yoga mindfulness build a really solid foundation for our life. His Holiness, the 14th Dalai Lama, was once asked what surprised him most about mankind, and he answered, man, because he sacrifices his health in order to make money, and then he sacrifices his money to regain his health, and he's so anxious about the future that he's not able to enjoy the present, the result being he's not able to live in the present or the future. He lives as if he's never going to die, and then dies, having never really lived. The message here is that life is for living. So if you have the intention to try and live each moment to the fullest, even if you miss a few along the way, you're doing good. <laughs>